Dan Plesak, MLB Network here on the Rich Eisen Show. How serious is what's going on with uh, with Verlander in Houston, Dan? You know, I think it's it's you know, there's a lot of teams right now. The Yankees look like they're compromised. And anytime, Rich, true. you get to spring training when there's about two weeks left, and guys have to miss time, and they're worried about beginning the season on time. There, there's always a caution, in particular with a guy like Verlander that has a lot of mileage on that arm, and a lot of people three or four years ago thought that this guy, the best baseball, was in the rearview mirror, and he's had a resurgence the last two or three seasons, and it, it would be a big blow to the Astros, who have enough going on outside of the game of baseball. They've had an off season for the ages, and that's why, Rich, I think it's going to be a very difficult year for the Houston Astros. Uh, you know, and I don't mean this in a joking way, but a lot of times, and I was I played for 18 years, and we all want to think how cool it would be to play for the Yankees, right? To wear the pinstripes, but there's that bubble that comes with playing with the Yankees. There, there, there's no franchise, and the Red Sox may be close. The fans in Philly can be tough, but in the game of baseball, you know, everybody wants to be a Yankee. Well, Yank, the Yankees outside of New York, they're they're hated everywhere that they go, right? You either love the Yankees or they hate the Yankees. And I kind of get the feeling like when I think of the Astros, they're going to get a chance to feel what it's like to wear the pinstripes going into Fenway Park because every ballpark that the Astros go in 2020, they're the enemy right now. And it's unfortunate because this is a bad analogy, and I've taken some heat for it, but I'll explain it. I thought the 2016 Chicago Cubs, they were a team that was hard not to like them. Anthony Rizzo, Chris Bryant, the list goes on and on. They they were a fun team to root for, and there wasn't really any villains. And that's kind of how you and I deal at the national level. We deal with a lot of players on a lot of different teams in a lot of different sports. And this Astros team was a team that they were they were easy to like they made it easy for guys like you and I you know they were they were they were outspoken and they talked and they had they had all the things that you wanted they had personality they had you know home run trots they had celebrations in the dugout everything that that baseball wants to be celebrating now you know let the kids play and let's have fun and forget that old way and you know act like you've done it before have fun and and laugh and now all of a sudden rich these guys they're walking around with a giant target on their back And I'll tell you what amazed me. I was a guest instructor with the Phillies the first week of spring training before pitchers and catchers reported. Mm -hmm. And not just in Philadelphia, but guys around the league, I've never seen a group of players more angered, more angry at this than the steroid era. And I played in the steroid era. I bet. Is it any more subsided? Do you think, or it's just it's still it's still I, I don't think it still is. I, you know what? I, I think maybe there are other stories now that have taken place to where we're we're not worrying about the garbage can and the banging, but they're going to be up against it, Rich, because there are a lot of. I mean, just think the first home stand that they go, and if they have a terrible road a home stand, and you know Bregman goes one for twelve, and, and the natural inclination is to say, well, now they're not cheating and they're not getting the signs. They're not going to be able to win for losing, and that's why I think they're very vulnerable. And, boy, that makes things for the Oakland A's. This might be the year that the A's win the West.